Hey, welcome back to Mr. Menta's ELL Classroom. Today we're going to be continuing our lesson on chapter 9 in the blue book, that is the simple present tense. So, to complete this video lesson, you are going to need to download the pages from the textbook that I have included in the, excuse me, in the description of the video. So, that is this one, page 83. This one, page 84, and this one, page 85, okay? All right, so you do not need to print these. You don't need to write on them. You can just put them up on your computer or your tablet and read them. What you are going to need is a sheet of notebook paper. So we've got a long story here. Pretty long here, see? With a lot of pictures describing what's happening in the story. And we are going to answer some questions about it. So over here you see Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo. That's the people in the story. And then you're going to read this. I'm not going to read it to you because we're at the end of the lesson now. So you're going to do a lot more work yourself. And then you're going to answer some questions about it. So over here. On your sheet of notebook paper, we have these questions, are questions about this story. Okay, so read the story first, then after you've read the whole story, go back and read these questions on page 84, and we'll read these. So, and then after you read the question, I want you to write the answer in a complete sentence on your sheet of notebook paper. So, for example, number one, it says... Where do Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo live? So on your paper, you're going to write number one. And then we'll go back to here. Okay. And look at that. First sentence. Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo live in an old Italian neighborhood in New York City. So you can write that. In that case, you can write pretty much the same thing, word for word. Mr. So we'll go down here. Okay, on your notebook paper, write Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo live in an old Italian a suburb in New York City. Okay, then you're going to read number two. Where does Joe live? And write the answer to that. All right, after that, we're going to move on to this, which is purely, uh, well, it's not purely grammar, but a lot of grammar. So we have number one, Mrs. DiCarlo, and then we have two words, read and reads the Italian newspaper. So which one is correct? By now, hopefully, we should know when we use the S and when we don't use the S, because that's what this chapter has been about. And so what you're going to do on your sheet of notebook paper is write number one, and then write read or reads, write the correct word. As a matter of fact, write the whole sentence. It makes a lot more sense to write the whole sentence, okay? So write the whole sentence, then we'll, pr that we'll practice it. So write, Mrs. DiCarlo reads the Italian newspaper. Pick the one word and write the whole sentence, but write the word read, or write the correct one. The listening exercise for this one, uh, we're not going to do this one. We're not going to do this one. We don't need to do that. Um, so you, after that, there is another section over here that we're going to go into, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. For now, I want you to read the story and then write the answers to these two sections on your sheet of notebook paper. Can you do that for me? All right, so let's go back to the story. Go ahead, read the story, and write the answers to those two sections. Pause the video now while you do your work, then when you're done, Unpause it. I'll go over the answers with you. All right, so pause the video now. I'll wait. Okay, did you pause the video? Great. So, I'm going to get my book ready here, and we're going to zoom in. Okay. So, so you should have written down 
a number of sentences, 10 sentences, based on the answers to these questions. So read over what you wrote and see if it matches what I'm saying. <coughs> Where do Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo live? Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo live in an old Italian neighborhood in New York City. Where does Joe live? <coughs> Joe lives, make sure you have that S, lives in a small suburb outside the city. Okay, so Joe lives in a small suburb outside the city. Number three. What language do Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo usually speak? They speak Italian. What language does Joe usually speak? He speaks, with an S, uh, English. So again, up here at number three, we said Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo speak, no S. Over here at number four, we said Joe speaks with an S. Make sure you got that S. Number five. What do Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo read? They uh, read the Italian newspaper. Number six. What does Joe read? He reads American newspapers. Make sure you wrote he reads with an S. R-E-A-D-S. Number seven. What do Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo listen to? They listen to Italian radio programs. What does Joe listen to? He listens to American radio programs. Where do Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo shop? They shop in the Italian grocery store. Where does Joe shop? He shops at a big suburban supermarket and shopping malls. Big suburban supermarkets and shopping malls. So important thing again, he shops, they shop. Okay, so we're practicing our grammar while we're practicing our reading skills. All right, next one. Mrs. DiCarlo reads the Italian newspaper. Mr. DiCarlo shops at the Italian grocery store. They live in New York City. Joe lives outside the city. He speaks English. Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo listen to the radio. They visit their friends every day. Their friends talk about life back in the old country. Joe calls his parents on the telephone. Joe's friends speak English. All right, did you get all those? Good. Now, we're going to go on to the next page, over here. This time, I'm just going to read the directions for you. You can follow along. Mrs. Kowalski lives in an old Polish neighborhood in Chicago. She's upset about her son, Michael, and his wife, Kathy. Use the story on page 83 as a model to tell a story about Mrs. Kowalski. All right. So see how we've got a picture here of a woman uh, and her son and her son's uh, wife. So now, over here, we had all of these pictures mixed together with this story. You know, here we have the uh, man and his wife and their son. You know, they, they speak the old language. He speaks English, you know. And each one of these pictures corresponds with what's going on here. Here it says, they read Italian newspapers. That's them reading Italian newspapers. They listen to Italian radio programs. That's them listening to Italian radio programs. They shop at an Italian grocery store around the corner. 
There they are shopping at the Italian grocery store around the corner. See? Well, now over here, we've got a bunch of pictures, but no story. Okay? So, we've got Mrs. Kowalski. Look there. There it is. She's reading a newspaper. She's listening to the radio. She's shopping at a supermarket. She's visiting her friends, just like in the other story. But now they didn't write a story about it. We just have the picture. So now you need to write the, write the story. Okay? So practicing all of the sentences that we've been using, all of the structures that we've been using, you're going to write one sentence for each picture in this story. Okay? And it's going to look a lot like the story on page 83. So if you ever get lost, you can look back at the story on page 83 and say, what were they talking about, okay? Only now, instead of saying, Mr. and Mrs. DiCarlo live in an old Italian neighborhood in New York City, you're going to say, Mrs. Kowalski lives in an old Polish neighborhood in Chicago, okay? Then you're going to say, she reads the Polish newspaper. She listens to Polish radio programs. She shops at the Polish market. She visits friends and they speak Polish. Okay? You're going to write all those sentences about Mrs. Kowalski and her neighborhood in Chicago, but it's going to be very close to this over here. Okay? So, you take a minute and write... This should come to 12 sentences, a 12-sentence story, a lot like the one on 83. And then after you've written those 12 sentences, come back to me, and I'll tell you about what it should say. You can change a little bit, but it, I'll tell you about what it should say. So pause now and write those 12-sentence stories, one sentence for every picture, okay? All right, so pause this, uh, the video now and write your sentences. I'll wait. Okay, did you pause it and write the story? All right, so let's do our best here. This is gonna be a little complicated for me to go over, but, so. Mrs. Kowalski lives in an old Polish neighborhood in Chicago. Okay? She reads the Polish newspaper. She listens to Polish radio programs. I hope you're remembering your S. Reads, listens, lives. She shops at the Polish grocery store or market. And then she visits her friends and they talk about and they speak in Polish or if we're going by this, they talk about life back in the old country. And again, um, there are some changes that you could make to this. I can't see everything you write at home. Uh, so I'm just giving you the general idea. What I do want you to pay attention to, though, is the grammar. When do you say live? When do you say lives? When do you say speak? When do you say speaks? That's important, okay? Next. And let's see here, what are these people's names? Mrs. Kowalski's son, Michael, lives in a house outside the city with his wife, Kathy. Okay. They read American newspapers. Or would we say English or American? We'll probably, we'll probably keep it in English. Okay, it said English before. Oh, but, okay. No, 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 American. They usually speak English, yeah. Keeping it to match what it said in 83, we're going to say American. They read American newspapers. They listen to American radio programs. They shop at a big American supermarket. When they visit their friends, they speak English. Okay? In fact... Um, what were their names again? Kathy and... Michael and Kathy. 
In fact, Michael and Kathy speak Polish only on phone calls uh, with um, Mrs. Kowalski. And when they visit every weekend. Mrs. Kowalski is sad because her son, her son and his wife speak, speak, not speaks, speak, so little Polish. She is afraid they're forgetting their language, their culture, and their country. Okay. How'd you do? Did you get that all written down? Okay. Good job. That's the end of this video. Good work.